Our last night on the solid ground of Elephant Island was cold and uncomfortable. We turned out at dawn and had breakfast. Then we launched the Stancombe Wills and loaded her with stores, gear and ballast, which would be transferred to the James Caird when the heavier boat had been launched. The ballast consisted of bags made from blankets and filled with sand, making a total weight of about 1,000 pounds. In addition, we had gathered a number of round boulders and about 250 pounds of ice, which would supplement our two casks of water. The stores taken in the James Caird, which would last six men for one month, were as follows. 30 boxes of matches, 6.5 gallon paraffin, 1 tin methylated spirit, 10 boxes of flamers, 1 box of blue lights, 2 primer stoves with spare parts and prickers, 1 Nansen aluminium cooker, 6 sleeping bags, a few spare socks, a few candles and some blubber oil in an oil bag, food, Three cases sledging rations equals 300 rations. Two cases nut food. Two cases biscuits equals 600 biscuits. One case lump sugar. 30 packets of true milk. One tin of bovril cubes. One tin of cerebos salt. 36 gallons of water. 250 pounds of ice. Instruments. Sextant. Sea anchor. Binoculars, charts, prismatic compass, aneroid. The swell was slight when the Stancombe Wills was launched, and the boat got under way without any difficulty. But half an hour later, when we were pulling down the James Caird, the swell increased suddenly. Apparently, the movement of the ice outside had made an opening and allowed the sea to run in without being blanketed by the line of pack. The swell made things difficult. Many of us got wet to the waist while dragging the boat out, a serious matter in that climate. When the James Caird was afloat in the surf, she nearly capsized among the rocks before we could get her clear. And Vincent and the carpenter, who were on the deck, were thrown into the water. This was really bad luck, for the two men would have small chance of drying their clothes after we had got under way. Hurley, who had the eye of the professional photographer for incidents, secured a picture of the upset, and I firmly believe that he would have liked the two unfortunate men to remain in the water until he could get a snap at close quarters but we hauled them out immediately, regardless of his feelings. The James Caird was soon clear of the breakers. We used all the available ropes as a long painter to prevent her drifting away to the northeast. And then the Stancombe Wills came alongside, transferred her load, and went back to the shore for more. As she was being beached this time, the sea took her stern and half filled her with water. She had to be turned over and emptied before the return journey could be made. Every member of the crew of the Stancombe Wills was wet to the skin. The water casks were towed behind the Stancombe Wills on this second journey, and the swell, which was increasing rapidly, drove the boat on to the rocks, where one of the casks was slightly stove in. This accident proved later to be a serious one, since some seawater had entered the cask, and the contents were now brackish. By midday, the James Caird was ready for the voyage. Vincent and the carpenter had secured some dry clothes, by exchange with members of the shore party, and the boat's crew was standing by, waiting for the order to cast off. I heard afterwards 
that it was a full fortnight before the soaked garments were finally dried. A moderate westerly breeze was blowing. I went ashore in the Stancombe Wills and had a last word with Wilde, who was remaining in full command, with directions as to his course of action in the event of our failure to bring relief. But I practically left the whole situation and scope of action and decision to his own judgment, secure in the knowledge that he would act wisely. I told him that I trusted the party to him and said goodbye to the men. Then we pushed off for the last time, and within a few minutes I was aboard the James Caird. The crew of the Stancombe Wills shook hands with us as the boats bumped together and offered us the last good wishes. <laughs>